Hello everybody. I mentioned last week that I was going to do something a little different this time and because of a significant date yesterday I wanted to talk about one of my main inspirations for doing this, essentially what brought it on. Yesterday was March 2nd and it was the 48th birthday of my best friend. We met, I don't know, 35 some odd years ago <laughs> when we were in sixth grade or grade six for you Canadians. I guess we were about 11 or 12 and we became fast friends. We were always sort of part of different groups of friends through grade school and on to high school, but always very close. In High school, we had a bit of a separation. She was sent to another school. I moved to another city. We kept in touch mostly, but it was really in our 20s when we were sort of reunited uh, as young adults and spent all of our time together and really became very close. When we were young, we used to draw together. We both had a interest and I guess a bit of a talent in art and we would draw pictures of the members of Def Leppard and <laughs> Duran Duran. We had very different styles but I think we both enjoyed it a lot and liked doing it together and it was a just a cute thing. Through high school I think we both really enjoyed doing art classes and uh, you know, just taking the regular art courses. Then again, when we were in our twenties and we were getting super close, we started to collaborate on things and we did something which is one of my probably proudest achievements in my life, which is our fanzine Corpus. And it was a local Toronto music zine that gained some popularity and some notoriety and uh, we just wrote about music that we liked and were just goofy. We actually stopped doing it because it got too popular for us to maintain. We instead went on to write together for Exclaim Magazine, which is a national music magazine in Canada. We did a couple of regular columns in that. We were always kind of known in the scene as Deb and Brooke. That's us, Deb and Brooke. As we grew more, of course, adult responsibilities and things took over. Deb had a family. She had a beautiful daughter. Uh, she married her longtime boyfriend, Mike. They bought a house. We, of course, were still super close. Even after we stopped writing together, we would spend all our time together going to shows or whatever it was. Then back in about 2005, I moved to Los Angeles and she would come out to visit me all the time or we'd meet up in a place and go to a festival, did that in Chicago and Denver and we'd have girls weekends or she and my friend Penny would come down together and we'd have a great time. And during all this time, she kept creating. I've told you before that I kind of gave up a little bit after high school. I didn't really pursue it, but she kept drawing and painting this whole time and she produced some wonderful stuff, some of which I have. I have a beautiful fall forest with trees. I have a portrait of Mark Bolin that she did in high school. I have her cherished and prized portrait of Dolly Parton. And I have one that she did, especially for me, which is Jimmy Stewart from Vertigo. She also did a number of album covers and things for her husband, Mike's band, and just a lot of great work. On one of her trips to visit me in Los Angeles, she was particularly obsessed with black velvet paintings. And we went to this place called the Velveteria in LA, which is a black velvet gallery. And she was in love. She just loved everything about the black velvet paintings and not just in the sense of, 
irony or cheesiness. She actually liked the art and she wanted to learn how to do it. So she was committed to starting to do black velvet paintings. At the time, I was also getting into doing paper flowers a lot. And we decided at that point to collaborate again. She would produce some black velvet paintings, send them to me, and I could embellish them with either paper flowers or flocked paper flowers, which is pretty much like velvet. And so we had all these visions of what we would do for that. But unfortunately, that never happened. On November 13th, 2017, Deb died by suicide after a very long battle with bipolar disorder and depression. She had been ill for quite some time at that point. In fact, I hadn't seen her in almost three years and our last trip together was that one where she visited me and we went to the Velveteria. Of course I wish I could have done something that I could have been there. It's hard for me to adequately express what that loss was for me. I never had a sibling, a brother or sister. She was as close to that for me as anybody. And I love and trust my husband infinitely. I have a very supportive and great family. I have amazing, wonderful friends. But Deb was probably the one person who I knew beyond a doubt, would be there for me, would have my back, and would always be on my side, no matter what, forever. She knew me at my worst, and she knew me at my best, and she still loved me. And that was proven many times, hard times in my life, when she was always there, even when we lived thousands of miles apart. And of course, she also left behind a beautiful daughter, a husband that I also consider a brother, and countless friends and family that loved her so much. She was just a amazing, brilliant, hilarious, beautiful, generous, kind person. And... The world is worse off without her. After she died, her husband, Mike, asked me to fulfill a promise that she'd made to her daughter, which was to paint her a replica of the painting from Goodfellas that Tommy's mom shows to the boys when they stop by with Billy in their car and she makes them eat dinner. I hadn't painted at that point in probably 20 or 30 years, seriously hadn't picked up a brush. So I was a little bit nervous about it, but I thought it was a cute thing and I'd really like to do that for Sita, her daughter. So I did that and it was weird copying a kind of bad painting to begin with, but I think it turned out pretty good and I enjoyed the process. But of course I was in the middle of my own grief so I don't know that I could really appreciate what it meant to do that fully. And then Mike decided to do a tribute record for Deb. He managed to get an unreleased track from one of her favorite bands, and he wrote his own song to go on the flip side. And he asked me to do a portrait for the cover. Again, Deb had done a lot of work for his album covers before and I guess he felt it appropriate. In fact, he insisted that I had to be the one to do the cover. I was really terrified to do it. Again, I was completely rusty. I didn't trust myself at all to do her justice. But I wanted to at least try. I wanted to
I wanted to create my own tribute to her. So I decided to do something that would be in the vein of what we had decided to collaborate on. So I got a black canvas and just started drawing her face from a picture that Mike gave me. And it started to look okay. And I decided that she should be a Calavera. She loves the Day of the Dead and all of the Mexican art uh, around the Day of the Dead. So I drew her as Calavera or with Calavera makeup on basically and <clears throat> made her hair out of paper flowers. And to my surprise, it turned out great. I was very proud of what I did and And I really felt like she would like it and that she would be proud of me too. So of course it occurred to me how helpful all of that was to my grieving process and how good it felt to produce something creative. So I'd been thinking about sort of getting back into drawing and things it seemed it seemed like a big task to sort of almost need to start over and relearn the basics, which is really what I wanted to do. And then coincidentally, this opportunity for the sabbatical came up, the benefit was announced, and I was like, wait a second, this sounds like something I need to do. I wrote up my application, I told a little bit of this story in the application, and it was approved, and... Now here I am, and I'm doing something now that I really wish Deb could see. I feel like she would be proud of me. She would be cheering me on. She'd probably be a little jealous of six months off to do this, but I know that she would be really proud of what I'm doing. I've often wondered how much of me is her because she had such an influence on everything including my personality certainly my memories and my jokes and I know there's a little piece of her in everything I'm producing I always think about what she would think of this glass piece or this painting or what advice she would give me with any of them I can see her commenting on the posts as I show everything and I miss her every day but I miss her even more in this process anyway I just wanted to tell you all about this main inspiration not only for this whole process but just in my life in general to be a better person to tell the people I love that I love them to cherish life a little more and just a word about mental illness and the devastation that it causes, of course, for the people that suffer from it and for the people around them. We really need to treat mental illness as a potentially terminal disease, whether it's bipolar disorder, depression, anxiety, any of the number of issues that people struggle with. They can ultimately lead to death and to me that is a terminal illness and these people are heroes as much as anybody fighting against cancer we have to remove the stigma we have to talk about it openly we have to support each other we have to help each other we have to explore treatments we have to encourage people to get treatment we have to applaud the bravery of people suffering through this and the survivors. I'll put some numbers at the end of this video if you are suffering or if you want to help those who are suffering. I encourage you to please reach out and do something because it's a plague 
that is taking way too many wonderful, amazing people from us. I think that's all for today. I'm a little bit worn out. <laughs> but next week, I'll return to the recap of all the crap I'm doing. And it'll be uh, hopefully funnier than this. <laughs> but thank you for watching and subscribing and encouraging and supporting and all of the things you've done to help me along this process. And I'll see you next week.